Engineered by Yamaha, where boating is just a way of life. Owen! Yes, how are you? Hey, well, then, no complaints. What's happening? No, they can't pass it. What are you up to? Hey, Owen, you know me, man. I'm hard at work as always, eh? I'm a, I'm a grafter, yeah. No, listen, what do you look at this here? That the fish are biting out of the camera. Really? Yes, no, there's a guy that catches the mouse cobs and mouse brown and greens and all the things. It's all the things. You know, the fish are biting there. Okay, okay, when are we going? Well, I guess I can get a day or two off my busy schedule, so yeah, I'm packing this afternoon and I'll see you tomorrow morning. I'm Great, we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, man, Owen. Cheers, eh? Yeah, we will. Bye. Owen Richter and myself are continuing our journey down here in the Eastern Cape at the beautiful Nabaga Eco River Estate. We're going to continue to target cob, bronze bream, and some of the other species that this beautiful area offers us. Hey, Owen. Rolf. How are you? Well, well, thanks, man. Can't be here. Yes, no, listen. Weather's right. Fish are hungry. They are biting. Good. It's good. October. It's time. I'm excited. Well, let's hit the road and get down there. It's time. Let's go. In the first show, we spent a lot of time targeting cob in the estuary and in the surf on the paddle tail. Unfortunately, conditions were very difficult and we really battled to get some fish. In this show, we're going to continue that quest and hopefully have some better luck. We're also going to take the bigger rods and do a bit of surf fishing with bait and see what other species we can land here at Nabaga Eco River Lodge. Cornelia, this uh, Nawaka Eco River Lodge is such a beautiful place and it's so well situated. I see we've got a, a river to our left here and then it seems like there's another river running out here. Is that the case? Yes, we've got two beautiful rivers. The one on this side is a Nabaha River and the one on this side is a Nabahana River. They are good for fishing. You can go fishing. We've got canoe boats. We can paddle with you, go for fishing and we've got a, a, a mangrove wise here. Right, and then uh, obviously we've got this beautiful surf here. Um, I can see some nice flat ledges running out to sea in front of us. And apparently there's more ledges to the southern side of the lodge. What's the fishing like there? Can we expect to get some nice fish there as well? Yes, there's a fishing, the fishing is good. Yeah, it's good on the surfing and even on that over that hill. Then you can go and stand. There's a flat there. You can stand and fish. It's beautiful. Well, we're going to go explore the area and hopefully we're going to catch some of those nice fish. I hope you will catch some. <laughs> After having a little chat to Nkwanele about uh, Nabaha Eco River Lodge, we settled down, um, unpacked, and decided to have a nice little chicken bra this evening. Planning tomorrow's morning fishing session, and we're going to head down to the beach tomorrow and look for some edible fish in the surf. After that nice supper we had, we woke up to another beautiful morning at Nabaha Eco River Lodge.
after a lovely supper last night here at Nabacha Eka River Lodge. We're off to a morning's fishing, or should I rather say we're going to spend the whole day on the beach. See what we can catch. We're going to start off doing a bit of paddle tailing, drop shotting, and uh, throwing a bit of plastics for cob. And then as the tide drops, we're going to move down south and go look for some fish with a bait, so some cobbies, bronze bream, maybe a few punsies. So it's going to be all day's fishing, and uh, I'm super excited. And Owen's going to guide us and take us to the right spots. Now, listen, beautiful day today, Rolof. And I think the fish will be lack hungry. Just you can't ask for a better day. Yeah, we can't. So I'm excited going and I have a nice day's fishing out today. What makes this Nabaha Eka River Lodge area so unique is the fact that you got the Nabaha and the Nabahana River both running into one mouth at the sea. This obviously creates a beautiful area for fish to move up the river at certain times of the year, especially the cob. Unfortunately, the river is still a bit cold, so we're gonna concentrate around the mouth of that river this morning and see if we can find those cob that are waiting to move up the river as soon as the water warms up a bit. Well, that was a beautiful little Paddle down the river. Uh, we're on the northern side now, so now to put on the boots and walk onto the rocks and see if we can catch a cobby. Where the Nabaha and the Nabahana River runs out to sea, on the northern side, there's some beautiful flat ledges. These ledges offer a perfect opportunity for anglers to walk out on the low tide, stand on the front of the ledge, and find some spots to fish for these cob. They're lying in the holes and around the ledges waiting for the mullet to come out. The sea is quite nice this morning. Um, it's, it's not as big, got a nice kick on it, a bit of white water working, and that's exactly what we need for these cob. They like to, to hunt in the white working water. If it's just blue and flat, you're going to really battle to get a bite. So, Conditions are looking great, tide's turning, so it's running out, out of the estuary mouth, and those cob are sitting here waiting for the mullet to get sucked out, and they will ambush them. So as soon as these ledges are shallow enough for us to wade out on, we'll go and start fishing, and I'm sure we can get a few bites. All right, so like I explained, we're gonna use those, those gulp ripple mullets, as well as the um, sick fish from Havoc. And then what we do, we rig it onto this nitro jig heads from Berkeley. We use a three quarter to one ounce, obviously to get the distance in the surf and get that lure to sink down to the right depths and work down on the bottom there. So nice solid you get, strong hook, won't open up on a fish and does the job. As it normally works with this cob, the angler gets a bait in the water first, gets that reaction bite and that's exactly what happened to Owen. Another nice scrub caught this morning of Nabaha River mouth. And it ate it like a sweet, as we would say. Down the hatch, very nice. This is a shared flash, ripple tail, Berkeley blue, but otherwise it's just beautiful. The same colors as the mullet on the top, the black and the little silver belly, but otherwise a beautiful cob. You can see the condition of these fish. Clean, healthy, beautiful. Very important fishing spots like this is to have the right reel, the right rod. 
This is a Conflict 5000 with a 10 foot Berkeley Venom Blood Path and Rod and a beautiful backbone. Something like, once again I say, you must have been fishing rocky reefs and stuff for these cop. To keep your line above your braid, above the reefs, and then you'll have lots of success. Well, we're taking this cob here, and hand underneath the bottom R, close the R, lift up a little scale, give a little push. Beautifully in. Well, this one's 77 centimeters. And we're going to quickly take this cob and we're going to put it back. Now it's the taggy number sticking out the back. Ori SA, that's the email address, yeah? You got on here. And the tag number D18399. A lot of people ask us why we tag fish and there's quite a few reasons for it. Number one, we obviously tag that fish, we measure it, so we get a length to weight conversion. And if that fish gets recaptured a year or two or many later, we've got information on that fish as to how much it's grown over the years and also depending on where the fish have caught, where it's migrated to. So the fish has been caught back here, certain time of the year we know they always come back here or it might get caught hundreds of kilometers from here. So it gives you all that data, it gets sent to Ori, they put on their database and it helps them a lot with their research on the movements of the cop, where they feed, where they breed, and which issues they come up and down with uh, to come and spawn. So always a nice thing to do, and nice to see guys tagging fish and releasing them. We made about a thousand throws there. Owen got that one nice fish, one or two bumps, but for some reason the fish just aren't here anymore. So we're gonna head back south over the river and can try some reason on the other side. Crossing the river mouth, heading south down the beach, offers a different type of fishing to us. Uh, where we had the flat ledges on the northern side of the mouth, this area offers a lot of beaches where you can fish for your fish like your steambras and cob, etc. And then also some rocky ledges. The southern area offers different type of structure, and hence all the different type of structure, we should get a few different species of fish here. Once again, Owen was over the rocks like a small Jack Russell. And before I could look, he had the first cast in the water, and once again, he was on. I changed a little bit of tactics. I went from a one and a half ounce, seven inch. I've gone through now to a three quarter with a little four inch Berkeley shared flash ribbon tail, as you can see it. And yeah, the cob feel for it. And I always say it's always nice to catch a fish on a lure with a braid, 
with the Venom blood python. Man, once again, a lot of reef in front here, you can't go wrong. The pen conflict 5000, beautiful reel. It's balanced, it sits nicely on the Berkeley Venom blood python. Like I said, I changed um, jig heads from a one and a half ounce to a three quarter ounce. I went a little bit smaller bait and yeah, we've got a cop. When fishing long stretches of beach where you've got sandy areas, rocks and ledges, it's always advisable to move a lot. Don't spend too long in one certain area. Fish it and if the bite goes away, move on to the next area. It, you generally end up getting more bites and you work more area. I spent a few hours doing the paddle tail and drop shot. Owen got those two beautiful cob and a few more bumps but it uh, went but dead now. So we've moved to another point and we're going to go with a bit, bit bigger tackle. We're going to fish with a Berkeley Venom. And the Conda says he put six rod, and we've rigged that up with a spin fisher 7500 long cast reel. And we're going to throw a few baits. We're going to look for some bronze bream, cop, uh, muscle cracker, anything of that sort. We've got beautiful running water here, white water working, so I think we'll get a few bites here. Well, I'm going to put on a number one owner. It's a nice sharp little look for this bronze bream and in between the bronze bream you get your brushes and your silver stemberas and your punsies. So you want a nice quality strong look for those fish. When fishing these areas where there's a lot of white rolling water, when it comes to bait presentation it's not that important because the fish are not actually going to see the bait. So we add a lot of smell and flavour to the baits in that rolling water, the bait gives off that flavour and the fish will pick that up and come and eat your bait. This little on here, first cast. And uh, let's see if it's target species number one, bronze breed. No. Target species number 10, black tail. Bye bye. Well, waiting for a bite. This third and good six, Venom Anaconda. It's hungry for a nice fish. As it is with fishing, you go through spells where it goes a bit quiet, and then you just gotta persevere and be patient because eventually that bite will come.
Here's one of our target species, bronze bream. Nice little fatty. My last cast, the last one, so I think the shoal moved in. And we're gonna see if we get one or two more. So much fun on this outfit. Light tackle fishing deluxe. I think that's us here this afternoon. It's been a long day on the beach, we worked very hard for our fish. Got some nice cobbies this morning and a few nice reef fish here in the afternoon. But we've been pushed off by the sea now, the tide's coming in. Weather's getting a bit miserable, so we're gonna end up a nice day now and walk back to Nabaka Echo River Lodge. Often people think when we go on these fishing trips, we walk down the beach and catch a lot of fish. But it's actually not true at all. Often the weather plays against you and you really got to work hard for your fish. And at the end of the day, you've got to put in that effort, uh, work different areas, try different techniques, until you get the pattern of how the fish feed in that specific area. And that's exactly what Owen and myself did. We, we did a lot of walking, a lot of talking, thinking, and at the end of the trip, we sort of figured out the pattern of the fish in this area. So always remember, fishing is not easy. In order to get results, you really got to put in a big effort. Okay, it was a nice day's fishing, I own. Yes, no, listen, caught some fish. Yeah. It wasn't easy. Obviously, conditions was a bit difficult again. It's, I think when we go filming, the conditions turn difficult. Automatically, that's how it works. <laughs> I think, you know, it, it happens to most people when you go away, you know, it's, it's weather. Yeah. And when, you've, when you're at the place you have to do with the weather you've got, so... That's it. But I think we did the right thing. We went scratching and mm. we got some nice bites, landed a few good fish. So I enjoyed it, eh? Yeah, at the end of the day, we put the time in and we were rewarded, eh? That's it, that's it. So tell me, and what do you do besides fishing socially? What's, what's your other job? Well, I've got a fishing company called Wild Coast Angling Tours, and I bring people through the Transcar oh. to places like this, yes. Okay, so that's why you know the coast so well. No, I love the game of fishing, mm. showing people what it's all about. Oh, excellent, man. Yeah, well, all I can say is thanks for showing us around here in one of your spots. And, uh, you know, I've learned a lot about the area. Next time I come back, I'm sure we'll catch a few more fish. No, thanks very much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, the summer months, of course, Transca is very good, the estuaries and stuff. But at the end of the day, we caught some nice fish. Yeah, I think we're a bit early, eh? Yeah. Uh, if, if we give it another month. A month or so, yeah, into yeah. October. Yeah, we call October Cobtober. <laughs> that's when the cob move into all the estuaries and stuff, warm, the water warms up. Okay. Well, next, next time we'll come that time of the year and give it a try. No, thanks very much. Yeah, Well, that brings uh, our trip here to Nabaka Echo River Lodge to an end. And Cornele, we just want to say thank you very much for having us. We really had a good time. We enjoyed it. Put some nice fish. And the lodge is beautiful. It was an excellent time. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to you too, sir. Yes, and uh, I'm sure we'll be back again, Owen. Yes, no, um, well. Like we discussed, we'll definitely be back here. And there's a lot of fish here with our names on it. We still want to catch. <laughs> <laughs> it was good having you here, sir. Thanks. Thank you very much. We're going to pack up now and head home.